So uh, the brain and the computer are um, doing the same thing in an abstract way. Just think about uh, like face recognition. If I show to you a picture of a, an actress like Jennifer Aniston, you say maybe after a second or two, Jennifer Aniston. Now if I take a camera, hook it up to a computer and run a face recognition software on this computer and I show to the camera a picture of Jennifer Aniston and the computer program is, is good, then within a minute or two it will come up with the same uh, solution, Jennifer Aniston. So both things do the same thing, uh, computers and brains. You know, the analogy sort of breaks when we go deeper inside. There are, you know, fundamental differences about the parts that make up a computer and make up a brain, but in an abstract way, as I said, they're doing the same thing. The human brain is extremely complex, you know, with billions of nerve cells. And uh, we have uh, a fairly good understanding of how the individual nerve cells inside the human brain, how they work. We understand how they generate electrical signals. We understand how they connect to each other, how they transmit the electrical signal from one nerve cell to the other. But what we don't understand is how these connections in local circuits produce certain computations, do the data processing that I just described. That's what we don't understand. So modern technology allows us, by putting the patient into the magnet, to visualize the brain activity through the local blood flow. And so we know what parts of the human brain are active when we're doing something with the brain. But the resolution at which we can do that is about one cubic millimeter. So this is the finest detail that is given by this machine. But within one cubic millimeter, there are about 100,000 nerve cells. And so we cannot, cannot resolve the individual contribution of a nerve cell during this uh, imaging. But the fruit fly's brain, for example, contains just 100,000 nerve cells. So this is what is contained within a cubic millimeter of the human brain. And so understanding this little brain is much more feasible and within reach, I would say, rather than the human brain. Motion vision is a great example of a neural computation and studying in a fruit fly is really a feasible enterprise. First of all, we have a very good model that describes in mathematical terms how the signals from the eye are processed in order to give you the direction in which something is moving. Now, through the work of the last few years, we know all the nerve cells that are involved in this computation of you know, computing the direction of motion. And now we can figure out how the connectivity and the properties of the individual nerve cells give rise to these mathematical operations. So we can learn something like the basic uh, algebra of nerve cells. I think the one aspect that fascinates me the most is the, our ability to imagine things and to plan the future in a virtual sort of environment without doing anything, just sitting there and thinking, right? So we, this gives us this incredible ability to place ourselves like a, a little agent into an imaginary world. And if we you know, want to reach a certain goal, then we can sort of play through various scenarios and then compare the outcome and depending on that, then pick the right choice and, and do the right thing. It is really something absolutely fascinating. How the brain is doing that, I have no idea.